Titan Arum lily has been in full flower this week. And that is unusual because it only happens sort of every six to 15 years. It's a 48 hour process from bud to full bloom. And the magic unfolded in Stellenbosch this week. And I'm joined now by Don Kirkwood, curator of the Stellenbosch University Botanical Gardens. Don, thank you so much for joining us. So talk to me, what is this Titan, which means big, I suppose, Arum lily. Um, why does it bloom so seldom? Where does it come from? So it's native to uh, the far west of Sumatra, which is one of the islands of Indonesia, of course, um, and uh, only occurs on limestone hills within forest clearings and sort of in secondary forests. So um, unfortunately, like much of the world, Indonesia has been uh, massively transformed by uh, agriculture, particularly oil palms. Um, and other habitat clearing. Um, so it's very rare in the wild. We know there's less than a thousand individuals left in its wild home. So that's one of the reasons so that it's so incredibly special. But of course, um, it's just a remarkable flower. It's the largest unbranched inflorescence in the plant world. What is um, it? And the fact mean? that it uses uh, the smell of decomposing animals as a uh, lure for pollinate also interesting. Why does it smell so awful? So there's a whole bunch of sulfur compounds and various other things that are in there, um, some of which are related to product or compounds that you would find, for example, in particularly smelly cheese. Um, but uh, the intention of those compounds, like many plants in, in nature, is to, is to pretend to be a dead thing to attract either um, flies that would like to lay their eggs on a, on a dead animal or similarly uh, beetles, carrion beetles that do the same thing that, that uh, would want to be uh, eating or feeding their young on dead animals. So basically it's tricking these insects into thinking there's a dead thing there. They would come in, they would come in contact with the reproductive parts um, and then they would move on to another flower and pollinate that. I see. And why does it bloom so seldom? So part of the reason for that is probably just its, its sheer size. Um, you know, you've, you've got a bulb that can end up getting up to about 100 kilos, but this is the, 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 the largest inflorescence, single inflorescence in the plant world. So this thing is, is a bulb. Um, when this flower is finished, it's going to go dormant. There'll be nothing above the ground until it sends up a giant leaf. That leaf will last for six to nine months and then it will go dormant. And every single time one of those events, the, the resources that have been built up in the bulb have got to be used to produce this massive structure. Um, and you can imagine that with, with a flower that can reach two and a half, or an inflorescence that can reach two and a half, three meters in height in exceptional specimens, um, that's an incredible amount of resources. This is not something that you could push out every year and, and stay alive. <laughs> so tell me, how did, uh, I presume you got a bulb, um, how did you get it to Stellenbosch and how long have you been patiently waiting for this moment that occurred this week? So the bulb was actually uh, sourced by the previous curator, Martin Smith, before I started there in 2018. Um, he got it to the garden in 2013 from a botanical garden in Germany, but it actually comes from this crazy dentist in the United States that grows these things uh, uh, better than just about anybody else in the world. And our plant is derived from a cross of two plants in different botanical gardens in the United States. How, um, how do you, how so do you look basically, Sorry, continue. Uh, from Indonesia to the States, got bred there, ended up in Germany, and then eventually ended up in Stellenbosch as a display plant. Is it the first time it's bloomed? Quite remarkable. Sorry, I missed that. Is it the first time this, this, this particular bulb has bloomed? Yes. So, so as far as we know, this flower was grown from seed in 2007. Um, and we got it in 2013. It certainly never flowered at the garden. Um, and we're pretty sure this is the first time that that plant has flowered. So tell me a, a fairly uh, is it time. difficult? Is it difficult to look after? I mean, it, it doesn't look like the kind of flower that you water once a week and forget about it. 
it's very easy if you have a tropical glass house that you can keep at uh, 30 degrees Celsius, 60 to 80 percent humidity, and you have a meter and a half sized pot to grow it in. So uh, I suppose probably for the average person, not so easy. <laughs> Talk to me about the, uh, you know, this is a 48 hour thing. It started opening, I think, on Monday, and that's when the smell was at its strongest. Um, but if someone wants to head out to Stellenbosch University Botanical Gardens this weekend and see it, will there be much to see? Um, no guarantees. Uh, <laughs> it could well start collapsing within the next day or two. Uh, certainly, if you come tomorrow, you will still see an erect flower. We've actually cut a window into the base on the one side, so you can actually look in and see the the male and female flower reproductive parts around that big central structure. Um, so it's definitely still worth seeing for at least the next uh, day or two, um, but we will keep updating how it's doing on our social media. So if you just look up Stellenbosch University Botanical Garden on Instagram or Facebook, uh, our um, handle is just S-U-B-O-T garden. Um, we will keep that updated and you'll be able to see where it's at at the moment.